on Monday the 5th of August 2024, the seven most valuable companies in the US lost over $500 billion of market value in just a few hours. At the same time, the Japanese markets were down over 12%, and with US unemployment rising, fears of a recession came roaring back to life. But what triggered this unprecedented sell-off? And are we actually in a recession, or is this just fear-mongering by the media? The first piece of this puzzle lies in this graph. In the year 2000, the unemployment rate in the US rose by 0.5% in the six months leading up to the 2001 recession. The same thing happened in 2007, in the six months leading up to the start of the global financial crisis. And the same thing is happening now. US unemployment is 4.3%, which is a three-year high, and the rise is over 0.5% for the past six months. This is breaking something called the SOM rule. This rule was developed by the economist Claudia Somm and is a recession indicator that focuses on unemployment trends. Here's how it works. The SOM rule uses a three-month moving average of the national unemployment rate. And when this average rises by 0.5 percentage points or more from its low during the previous 12 months, it signals a recession. It's quite a mouthful. The SOM rule was first introduced in 2019, so it hasn't really been used for any real recessions but it has been a historically accurate predictor of recessions. So if you would apply the SOM rule to 2001 and 2007, the SOM rule would signal trouble ahead with the same pattern. Since the SOM rule is so new, a lot of people have been asking whether this is just looking for answers in data using fancy methods, rather than something that is empirically true. Interestingly, Claudia Somm herself has stated, the US is not in a recession, despite the SOM rule indicator bearing my name saying that it is. That said, the risk of recession is elevated, strengthening the case for the US Federal Reserve to cut interest rates. Okay, okay, hold on a second. So the woman who made the indicator does not think we're in recession, but tons of other people who use that indicator seem to think that we are? Okay, bro. If you enjoyed the video so far, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps grow the channel and we're pretty new to this YouTube stuff. So getting some feedback from you really, really helps. Okay, so the breaking of the SOM rule may or may not be part of what is causing all of this uneasiness, but one thing that definitely is, is the recent drop in the markets. On August 5th alone, over $1.9 trillion was wiped out from the US stock market. And just for comparison, this is larger than a lot of the entire stock markets in Europe. And leading the way was the technology-heavy Nasdaq, dropping over a thousand points in a single day. So this dramatic fall was largely driven by sell-offs in major tech companies like Nvidia, Alphabet, Apple, Microsoft, etc. Collectively losing over $500 billion in market cap in just a few hours. This huge drop was fueled by global recession fears and concerns over the sustainability of high valuations in the tech sector, specifically in AI. Actually, it was all about the yen carry trade, but you probably haven't heard of it. Ah, the yen carry trade. If you're terminally online and follow markets like me, you've probably heard people talk about the yen carry trade. And in essence, the yen carry trade is a strategy where investors borrow money in a currency with very low interest rates, like the Japanese yen, and then invest that money in assets or currencies that offer a higher return. Here's an example to make this a bit more clear. So you're big investor McMoneypants, and you borrow 1 million Japanese yen at an interest rate of 0.1%. You then convert that yen into US dollars and you invest it in US government bonds that pay an interest rate of 2%. The difference between the low borrowing cost and the higher investment return is your profit. Never mind that 1 million yen is like 7,000 bucks, but whatever. This is pretty smart and it works pretty well until it doesn't. Because if the Japanese yen starts to strengthen against the dollar or if the assets you've invested in, for example, US tech stocks, start to decline in value, you're going to be forced to unwind this trade quickly to avoid losses. And that is one of the things that led to the huge drops in both the Japanese and the US markets. So the yen carry trade was one big part of the crash, but it wasn't the only reason. In addition, we're also in the middle of earnings season, where companies report on how much money they've made so far this year. And a lot of the tech companies like Microsoft, Google and Amazon have missed market expectations, especially within AI leading a lot of people to ask the question, is AI all it's hyped up to be or not? Another thing that could be seen as quite scary is the fact that Warren Buffett sold half his stake in Apple. And I bet a lot of people thought that if Warren Buffett sells, why on earth am I holding? A comparison that was brought up a lot, especially on X, was the comparison to Black Monday of 1987, 
where the Dow Jones fell by 22.6% in a single day. And one of the reasons why we might feel that this crash was on par with Black Monday was the fact that so much market cap was erased in such a short period of time. I mean, if you looked at X on Monday, it was like, World War III is starting! Stocks are crashing! Everyone is unemployed! What's happening? So are all of these people on X correct? Is the sky falling down? Are we in a recession or not? Or are we heading into one? One thing is certain. Forecasting what the economy is going to do is hard. It's extremely hard. An old joke says that economic forecasting is like driving blindfolded with instructions from a person looking out the rear window. And if we go back to just 2022, economists were forecasting a 100% chance of recession in 2023. I don't know how you do that, by the way. But not only was there no recession in 2023, the Nasdaq ended the year up 50% and unemployment was extremely low. In addition to this, there were a lot of solid indicators like consumer confidence being extremely low, aggressive rate hikes, high inflation, and more technical stuff like inverted yield curves that signaled a recession in 2023. But it never came. So what we're seeing now might actually be the recession people thought we were going to have after COVID actually materializing. And one thing that makes these recession fears a bit more prominent at this point is interest rates. So despite stocks falling and unemployment rising, the Federal Reserve have decided to keep interest rates unchanged. This decision comes as inflation, although down from its peak, has stubbornly stayed around 3% for the past year. And a lot of analysts expected rates to be cut by now. Goldman Sachs, for example, expected five rate cuts starting in March of this year, which have glared with their absence. These high interest rates, which are the highest in over two decades, aim to cool the economy by making borrowing more expensive. But there is a growing concern that keeping rates this high for this long might stifle economic growth and edge us closer to a recession. But by maintaining these rates, the Fed hopes to prevent inflation from surging again, but the strategy also slows down economic recovery, which pushes potential rate cuts further into the future. But the fact that interest rates are so high at this point might actually be a good thing. If we actually are in a recession, central banks around the world will have more room to maneuver and can more efficiently help us avoid a deep recession by cutting interest rates to stimulate the economy. Recessions, while pretty scary, are actually a natural part of the economic cycle and they can serve as a reset mechanism that corrects imbalances and reduces excess, and ultimately paving the way for new growth. A lot of the biggest and most well-known companies in the world were started during recessions. Companies like Airbnb, Slack, WhatsApp, Uber, and even Microsoft are just a few examples. My point is that it's easy to get caught up in the doom and gloom, especially when you're sitting here on YouTube. But after every single recession, there has been a recovery. While the fears of recessions are valid and the risks are there, I'm certainly not losing any sleep over it. Yet. Speaking of recessions and toughing it out, if you want to watch a video about a family dynasty that have always kept their cool during crises and they've seen a lot, take a look at this video about the secret family that rules Europe.